Hello everyone, I'm Aaron, a birding naturalist. Welcome back. These are nesting cliff swallows. And I'm here at a colony and I wanted to share them with you. Cliff swallows are remarkably social swallows. In fact, they're arguably the most gregarious social swallows anywhere in North America. And everything about their biology kind of relates back to that adaptive fact. When they migrate, they migrate socially. They migrate in big groups, sometimes smaller groups, but most of the time big groups, sometimes very big groups. And they migrate from across North America basically everywhere except for the northernmost extent of the continent. And they migrate through Central America and down into South America where they winter kind of across uh, Central and Western South America, which they do communally. They spend the winter together in big groups. They fly back north together in big groups. When they come here to places like California and like I said, much of the rest of North America, they breed in big groups. They nest in these colonies that can number in the hundreds or even thousands of individuals. And they build these nests that are sort of gourd-shaped and made out of mud. What the birds do is they'll find a patch of mud, scoop up a billful of mud, and, and then carry it to their selected nest site. Mixing it with their saliva, they add that little blob of mud to their framework, their, their, their mold that they're creating to create this structure. And as the, mold, as the mud dries in place, it hardens, and so it becomes this firm structure that can support the weight of a whole little family of cliff swallows. They build these things out kind of with a wider base and a narrower opening. That helps protect them from invasion by predators. And they do so side by side by side by side by side. They can form these big nesting colonies and that leads to more interesting social interactions because each individual swallow, it's pretty well documented, can find its way back to its own nest. However, that doesn't stop them from visiting other people. Sometimes swallows will lay eggs in other swallows' nests. Sometimes swallows will lay an egg in their own nest and then pick it up in their mouth and carry it to a neighbor's nest and put it there. So because these birds are so social that leads to a lot of very interesting social interactions. They also feed socially. And this is another place where being social and hang out, especially in the nesting colonies, but also really anytime in these big colonies really helps them out. So cliff swallows eat almost exclusively insects on the wing. They are on the wing and the insects that they catch are also on the wing. They catch them in flight. They really like to feed over bodies of water. And so they go out from their nests, zooming around, finding flying insects. However, sometimes it can be tricky to find flying insects. And when a swallow has had a tr tough time of it and comes back to the nesting colony without much food, they watch their neighbors and see who's returning with a lot of food and then follow them to find the insect emergences or clusters. So it's a way of sort of social signaling to each other that, hey, here's the food. Oh, that person's found the food. That bird's found the food. I'm going to follow that bird. I'm going to follow that bird. And so it's a way of sort of information sharing amongst individuals of the entire colony. Yet another aspect of the sort of sociality that comes into play are the young birds. When young cliff swallows fledge from the nest, when they leave, they form what are called creches. Lots of juvenile birds gather together in big groups. Again, this can be tens to hundreds to occasionally even like a thousand or so young cliff swallows hanging out together. Sometimes they'll have an adult or two sort of around sort of watching over them. More likely they're mostly left to their own with the adult just visiting and coming to feed their own young. 
Impressingly, impressively, adult cliff swallows can identify their own young in this group, this massive group, probably largely by sound. They can individually recognize each other's uh, calls and voices. So the adults can come in, feed their young, and then zip off. Now, one question that I had is if there's all this egg swapping that goes on, and then later there are adults that can recognize their own young, are these adults feeding adopted babies, basically? Are they feeding maybe a group of their own babies with a couple of other adoptees mixed in? Is there something that it vocally allows them to tell if a bird is an adoptee versus genetically their own offspring? Do they care at all? I don't know, and I'm not sure that anyone has ever looked into it, but it's an interesting thought that popped into my head as I've been watching cliff swallow nest colonies. One complication to cliff swallow nest colonies are, uh, is posed by house sparrows. So like cliff swallows, house sparrows often like to nest in cavities and sort of enclosed spaces. But unlike cliff swallows, house sparrows don't build their own. House sparrows are a non-native species to North America. They were introduced from Europe and they've caused a lot of problem for cavity nesting native bird species. And the cliff swallow is no exception to this. House sparrows can sometimes come in. They are a bit bigger than uh, most cliff swallows. They are also more sort of aggressive, more persistent in some ways. And so they'll come in and kick a adult pair of cliff swallows out of their nest and sometimes kick out eggs and babies as well and take over that gourd-shaped nest. And in fact, some places there are enough house sparrows that will do this that it actually reduces the reproductive success of the cliff swallow colony. To combat that, wildlife managers in many states have actually gone through extensive trapping programs to capture house sparrows, especially right in the vicinity of cliff swallow nesting colonies and remove those house sparrows. And that has been shown to be effective. If you, if you sort of keep at it through the breeding season, especially through the early part of the breeding season, people can reduce the number of house sparrows in an area to the point where the cliff swallows are able to flourish and reproduce and be very successful. So it's a good example of how invasive species are a problem, but also how invasive species management can actually work. Yes, it takes effort, but it does work. Where these colonies occur is also kind of interesting. As their name suggests, the cliff swallow historically nested on cliffs, nested in the mouths of caves. But if you think about that, that's a pretty sort of specialized geographic type. There aren't cliffs everywhere. There are not caves everywhere. But cliff swallows have really benefited from human structures. Humans build these things called buildings and bridges, all sorts of vertical structures, often with a bit of an overhang, which is exactly the kind of thing that cliff swallows just love to build their nests on. And so while historically the primary substrate, if you will, for a cliff swallow to build its nest on was like a cliff or a cave entrance. Now, today, most of the time, most cliff swallows are nesting on human-built structures. Now, happily, even considering issues like collisions with cars and pesticides and those house sparrows, cliff swallow populations seem to be doing pretty well. They've been stable for quite a while and they are not facing many threats. They're very uh, numerous and so they're considered to be of a low conservation concern, which is great. It means we'll be able to enjoy cliff swallow colonies for a very long time, assuming that we continue to protect them and manage them and take care of their environment, give them all the things that they need to be successful. Let me know in the comments if you've found a cliff swallow colony, maybe share a photo or something, and uh, what it is built on or under. They are incredibly diverse in the different kinds of structures that they are willing to nest on. So I'd love to see uh, what cliff swallow colonies you've been finding. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something about our cliff swallows. As always, 
Thank you very much for the view. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, enjoy the natural world.